Virgo, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here. So I wrote out, created affirmations for each of the sun signs. I think I've gotten up to you so far. And for you, I have my natural inclination to serve others with humility is balanced by the understanding of nurturing the self as well. And the reason I did that uh, or said that or wrote that for Virgo is because you are a sign that loves to help other people. And as often happens, when somebody is willing to help, somebody is willing to be the one to come in and take. And I'm not a tit-for-tat type of a person. I don't think that we should say, okay, well, this person did this for me, then I'll do that for them. I think that's very tacky and that's wrong. But sometimes helpers, as they are known as, have a tendency to burn out or to feel unappreciated. And that's because they don't take care of themselves as well. And so that becomes an issue of worthiness of whether or not you deserve to take care of yourself. And, you know, the same sentiment, positive sentiment that you give to others when you help them should also be directed at the self. And part of all of this stuff about attracting more abundance into your life has to involve your desire to receive as well. Sometimes people are very good at giving, but they're not as good as receiving. So I think um, all of these are important issues uh, to look at. And um, if you'll pardon my moon and Virgo having my notes here. Okay, so I wanted to talk about some transits that affect your finances and your career for the rest of 2017. So Mars in November is going to be in Libra all month long, and that is your second house of earned income. For a Virgo person, this may mean that you are just hustling. Could mean, you know, depending on the individual, some people may be trying just to hustle together um, money to pay the rent, or some people may be trying to work multiple jobs. I think this is more of a case where people are somehow working perhaps multiple jobs. It is the holiday season, of course, and Virgo people are very flexible. You're a mutable sign. You're capable of having different irons in the fire. Uh, let me see what else is going on that might indicate. Well, there's going to be a full moon in your 10th house of career on um, December 3rd. So that may be somehow tied into Mars in the second house. You You may be like finishing a project and there's a deadline, and then you get your recognition. You get, the, you know, at the beginning of December. Some, some people, if you're like in a particular career that you're going to leave, that could indicate maybe you're retiring, but you have like a flurry of activity right before you, you do so, and that has to do with your, your earnings. Um, I think this is significant I want to talk about the fifth house because for you, that is the sign of Capricorn. And there's some significant uh, triggers going on. The sun moves into this sector, I believe, on the same day as Saturn uh, goes there. So I think that's the 20th this year. It's the, it's the winter solstice, but I'm not sure if uh, this year it's the 20th or 21st. When I looked, it looked like 20th, and then I heard somebody else saying the 21st. So, you know, it's right around that, that time period, right before Christmas. And this is going to be a friendly angle to you. For everybody, uh, Saturn and Capricorn is much more uh, kind of at home with one another because Saturn rules Capricorn. And, but I think even for, for a sign like um, Virgo, this works out very well because 
it is that kind of practical energy that you are also known for. So it's not, um, there's no conflict there. When Saturn was in Sagittarius, it was uh, a bit of, an, uh, of a strange uh, bedfellows because they, they, they couldn't be more different, you know. Sagittarius is ruled by, by Jupiter and there's that sense of just excess. And, and Saturn is um, very much into like whittling things down. So if you have any friends that you can observe and one is a Sagittarius and one is a, um, I was going to say a Virgo, but a Capricorn, you can see the difference in their basic approach to life. So you, I wanted to mention that because that's your fifth house. And um, the fifth house can be home business. So if you've ever entertained the idea of doing something like that, that might be something that is very appealing to you. And that could be very successful for you in terms of the long haul. Not like a flash in the pan kind of a, a, a gain, but something that Saturn is all about making things um, deeply entrenched in your life but things that work for you, not against you. So uh, that has um, been happening. You have had, you have had um, Saturn in the fourth house. So that may have felt somehow restrictive. Maybe you had to take care of a parent and you felt like your life was put on hold. That's always possible. Or something involving a property that you couldn't, you know, sell, uh, you couldn't just uh, give away. It was just not moving. So that may ease up. But the other thing I wanted to tell you before I pick some oracle cards is that in November, there's a lot of energy concentrated in the third house of communication um, in Scorpio. So around the time of that new moon on the 18th in Scorpio, there's going to be the sun there, the moon there, Venus, and Jupiter. And Jupiter is going to be there for a whole year. So that, what's the importance of the third house? Well, the third house is the house of any form of communication. Uh, in 2017, the internet seems to have cornered the market in that. And... The other significance of that third house is that it's also ruled by Mercury, which is your ruler in the sign of Gemini. So you are very acclimated with matters of the third house in your own way. You, as a Virgo, tend to be more practical, but you're not adverse to uh, communication. It's just that you prefer to have it make some kind of positive change in people's lives. And so if you have been entertaining starting a YouTube channel, you could do a how-to series. Maybe you have certain expertise in one area that you could share with others. So I'm just putting it out in the universe because with all that energy concentrated in one area, it seems like uh, the universe is calling for you or calling on you to do something with your talents and share them with others. Okay, so I'm going to be picking four cards to our uh, Earth themes, Native Spirit deck and Earth Magic deck. And this isn't just, you know, because you're a Virgo and an Earth sign. This is because the upcoming the first full moon, which is in November, is going to be in Earth, in Taurus. And I'm going to be picking an Energy Oracle card as well as Keepers of the Light card. So there you go. So the first one is my Need of Spirit deck. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. White Buffalo. I don't like to have this in frame. Okay. And the Earth Magic deck. Oh, this one jumped out. I think I'll pick it. Hmm. 
this around the time when you had your new moon, autumnal equinox. And then Energy Oracle. And holding a heart. <laughs> the one I call my the Fabio card. And the Keepers of the Light. Lord Shiva. And I think there might be a Shiva. I'll have to look that up, but Transcendence. I think there's a... Um, I don't know if Shiva... I think Shiva's associated with the fire element. And I think there's a puja, like some kind of a worship service for Shiva in this time frame. So I'll have to check on that one. Okay. So, you know what? I'm going to begin with Shiva because it's just too interesting to me. It says, Transcendence. Rise up, honor your inner force. Steps are being given. Dance with the universe. And Shiva is known as a destroyer energy, so I'm curious to see how that all ties into everything. Shiva is one of India's trinity of ma male god figures. He is depicted wearing a cobra around his neck. I don't see. Oh, that's a cobra? I thought that was a necklace. Uh, representing his capacity to tame fear or the ego, surrounded by stars, showing his connection to the cosmos, and holding a trident, acknowledging the three aspects of divine masculine power in India, creator, preserver, and destroyer. He is known as the destroyer because of his warrior-like energy and ability to destroy fear. He is a facet of the divine father energy and offers paternal protection, support, and guidance. He's also acknowledged as the cosmic dancer because he helps coordinate the interaction between earth and the cosmos. He has the capacity to help us move beyond the fear of failure and into clarity and connection. Lord Shiva is with you right now to awaken your sense of connection to life itself. You are moving through a deep transition and things will be clearer from this point. You will know exactly what you need to do and where you need to be. This is a powerful time and you will transcend the limitations that others have set for you. It is a time of innovation, ideas, stargazing, soul traveling, and soul revealing. Shiva, the Lord of Dance, is here with the sacred sound of Om to lead the way. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm trying to think of some astrological support for that. You had the North Node in your sign prior to this um, summer for like 18 months. And so for Virgos, there may have already been uh, other phases that felt like you had changed and maybe you have altered your way of thinking about certain things. And this is just an, yet another example of that. And just thinking myself in my own life, you know, about this specific issue about abundance and stuff. And... Um, it doesn't, a lot of times people think that if you're not a millionaire while you're making these shifts that you really haven't embraced these ideas. And it has nothing really to do, you can see it like in a, on a very small scale, improvement in your finances, improvement in the, the, the thing that you call your dharma or your job. The, the word job sometimes is fraught with a lot of negative um, influence. So perhaps you would see it as your, your path and, uh, and not as work, job. If you've started to shift in that way, that's wonderful because it will uh, rep you know, 
reflect itself um, in the outer world and what comes about for you. And um, so just kind of like, I think having awareness of any attitudes that have shifted in your life is the first step of seeing how you've changed. I'm just going to go backwards, I guess. <laughs> okay, man holding a heart. And this is number 40, is it 45, yeah. It says, this signals a greater clarity about emotions and their purpose in your life. There could be a more balanced approach to family and love at this time, even if you've been having confusing experiences in the past. For some, this card upright could signal the presence of a new man in your life, one who tends to be more thoughtful and aware. Whether this man is a love interest or a friend, he brings a high intention to help where personal projects family, or home issues are concerned. And the affirmation is, I am comfortable with all of my emotions. I honor and express them in appropriate ways. I feel peace. For, for Virgos, as an earth sign, it's, um, it's kind of um, interesting. You would have to know, too, what your moon sign is, because it's funny. My sun is in Sagittarius, my moon is in Virgo. And I find that I do analyze my emotions with the moon in Virgo. And then I don't really, sometimes there is that sense of not being in touch with them because that layer of mind is kind of in between. Now, if some of you have water sign for your moon sign, this can, I don't know, it can, it can work both ways. It can make you more empathic in a very overt way where people can really feel that you're feeling uh, <laughs> what they're feeling or it can simply feel like it gets in the way of you being able to accomplish things so um, definitely look at how emotions play a part in your life right now we have Neptune and Chiron and Pisces and what is interesting about that is that because it's the opposite sign of Virgo, you may feel like you're revisiting some issues that involve your um, deep wounds and also the, the dreams that you had or also the illusions that you've had and you have to kind of reconcile between those things. Okay, so this is the earth magic, yeah. Autumn Equinox, release. That's kind of what Shiva said. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. Now is the time to let anything in your life fall away that is no longer useful or needed for the emerging expression of who you are. Allow yourself to gradually shed what has become burdensome and no longer congruent with your soul's purpose. Conserve your energy by allowing yourself more rest while at the same time making preparations for the winter season. Look especially at your material possessions. And be brutally honest with yourself as you discern which of these can be given away or somehow released. Consider shunning relationships that have served their purpose and are no longer viable, as well as work or job that has become devoid of interest and passion. With release comes a sense of being much lighter, just like the trees that openly bear their nakedness once their leaves have departed and give room for whatever new life is ready to birth following a period of quiet and, dis and gestation. So let go of whatever has outlived its purp purposefulness and trust that something else will take its place. 
And, you know, there is such a, it's funny, I was not even paying attention to the, the title of the card as I was reading that, and I was thinking, wow, that sounds like this time of the year, as we prepare for winter in the Northern Hemisphere. But, um, you know, the same thing can apply in the summer when you're trying to lighten, you know, you lighten your diet sometimes, lighten your uh, clothing. And, um, you know, there's also the term spring cleaning, <laughs> just as we... Um, go into winter in one area, we're going into the warmer weather in another. So with uh, Virgo, I think a lot of Virgo people live very simple lives. They don't necessarily have a lot of uh, excess. And so for you, this may be more on an emotional level, maybe, or even um, mental thoughts. Maybe there's just too much going on related to that. And you need to start shutting um, a lot of the influences that make you think too much. I always say Virgos are high strung. Just talking about myself, having it as a moon sign, but I, I know, even looking at the body type of a Virgo person, they tend to be thin, they tend to be very uh, kind of like quick movements because of Mercury, and um, the the mind needs to, to be have a release as well. Okay, and then the last card is this Native Spirit, White Buffalo. I think this is a good omen, as I recall. Abundance and security are flowing into your life. All things are possible. Balance and harmony prevail. You may be called upon to stand up for others, but you can do this because you have the support of many beings in the spirit realm. In Native American traditions, there are prophecies about the coming of the white buffalo. And um, when this card chooses you, it's an honor, for it speaks of a time of miracles and balance in all things. You are a channel for the greater forces of the universe, in the universe. With, with their help, all is possible. But without it, things can be a struggle. Surrender to support from the Great Spirit. You do not have to do everything alone. I'm glad I did it like this because I went and that card actually deals with abundance. See how that happens when you honor your instincts, Virgo, and you don't overanalyze things? Okay, well, I wish you all the best in the last two months of the year, and take care of yourselves. Bye.